I've recently begun exploring comic books as a storytelling medium and have landed upon my favorite superhero, Superman. I wanted to start with a classic story that tells of his origins, so here we are, beginning with Superman the Man of Steel by John Byrne. The prologue introduces us to a dying Krypton. Jor-El is searching for his child Kal-El, ready to fling him off into space. His wife Lara doesn't agree with his actions. Jor-El informs her that his decision will ensure their son's survival. He's returned from a survey that confirmed a chain reaction within the planet's crust that has created a new radioactive metal, kryptonite, which is killing the Kryptonians. Despite having control of the planet, the Kryptonians have achieved a cold and heartless society stripped of feeling and passion and life. Jor-El has done his research and found the one place full of feeling, passion, and life. Earth, though Lara finds it an uncontrollable wild world, fearing for her son's future, she tries to convince him that Earth isn't suitable, but he assures her that the yellow sun will provide him with great strength. Lara is put at ease when she realizes that Kal-El may be able to rule them all. I'm sorry, wait. What? Suddenly, the eruption begins and Kal-El is sent on his way. Eighteen years later, we see Clark Kent flexing his muscles in high school football, which upsets the other players on Smallville High, prompting Jonathan Kent to inform his son where he's really from. We see the Kents fearing it's a Russian probe. Clark realizes that his powers and abilities must be used for good, not to show off and boast. Later, in Metropolis, Clark Kent is on the scene, saving the day when two ships crash into each other. Lois Lane is inside, and he catches her. Unfortunately, before they can really talk, everyone overwhelms them because they want to know what just happened, what did they just see. So, Clark Kent goes home and finds a way to disguise himself as Superman. Now... He spends his time going around the city of Metropolis to save others. Lois Lane is on the chase to find him. Meanwhile, a woman's purse is stolen by a petty thief, which Superman stops and saves the day. But he hears a hostage situation on the radio, so he goes over to inspect what's happening. Standing tall, walking into the line of fire, he goes in ready to fight. Impervious to bullets and using his heat vision, he manages to save the day. Lois Lane tries to catch him by jumping out of the helicopter, but she's too late. She searches far and wide all over Metropolis for the lead on her story, but can't find anything, growing ever infuriated by his elusiveness. Then one day she gets the idea while at work that she must be there at the scene of danger for him to catch her. That way that she can get an interview with him, which is exactly what happens. She is taken home directly by him, and now she has the story. Uh, except it's too late. Another man, Clark Kent, came in and beat her to the punt. Rats. Hate when that happens. Later, in Gotham City, we peer down on a petty thief going around. He's attacked by the caped crusader. However, before he can do anything... Although Batman is intimidating to him, his boss is even scarier, so he refuses to provide any information to the Caped Crusader. Then, Superman stops Batman and tries to throw him into jail, but that doesn't work. Batman gets away, and he's got a plan to stop Superman from stopping him. If Superman touches him, a bomb will explode, killing one person. Batman goes ahead and explains his actions to the Man of Steel. And we learn that it is Magpie who is responsible for these recent activities. While at her base, Batman and Superman show up. She doesn't know who he is, so she mistakes the S for Seymour? I don't think so, Magpie. It's in fact Superman! The two together manage to put her in jail and they discuss her motivations. They promise to keep an eye on each other afterwards. And then Batman says he might even call him a friend in another life. Then the next part, Lois and Clark are going to the party hosted by Luthor on his giant boat. They're going to write a report on everything that happens there. They meet him and he is quite scummy. Then, of course, Latin American terrorists decide to attack because Luthor has made some angry with his business dealings down there. Superman comes and saves the day, and Luthor admits that he is responsible for endangering everybody, so he gets thrown in jail, even though he's too confident in his power. Then he promises to get revenge on Superman. 
In a far more interesting part of this story, Superman and Lex Luthor have now built up a rapport with each other. Not a good one, but they have their differences and they are apparent. Luthor is angry and has been looking for ways to seek revenge by building another Superman. However, it fails. Meanwhile, Lois is checking in on her blind sister Lucy, who will become important later. A strange, mysterious figure we don't see is going around just like Superman, saving the day, but it's some kind of monster, apparently. Then, Lucy attempts to take her life because she's blind and can't handle it anymore. But again, another person that looks like Superman is saving the day. And Clark becomes aware when he hears a strange noise of this figure that we have yet to see, whose color has now changed to white, and he starts to fight with Superman. Because this bizarro, shall we say, Superman knows all the memories of Clark, he takes Lois and then steals a kiss from her. Revealing Clark's secret desires, then we have some really cool action panels with the two supermen fighting with each other. Just when it looks like Bizarro is about to gain the upper hand, Superman has the idea to look at the dust that has come onto his body. He realizes that they are of equal strength, so there's only one thing to do. Head straight for him, see what happens at full speed. Boom! An explosion. Shoom, I suppose. And, of course, somehow Lucy is recovered of her blindness. Nobody knows, but he maybe he did. We are returned to Smallville. Superman, Clark Kent, wants to see his parents, of course. No one has any demands of him as Clark Kent or Superman. However, he feels restless, so he goes hunting through the fridge at night and comes across Jor-El's ghost, his own biological father. And he's given a vision of Krypton where he sees what his life could have been and comes across his mother, Lara, who suddenly turns into Lana when he comes to, who tells him about the night he broke her heart. And he plays coy or just doesn't seem to understand because he's a doofus. But this conversation gives him a lot to think about. Who am I? Where do I come from? And eventually he has another vision brought on by the ghost of Jor-El that helps him understand the history, culture, poetry, drama, works of great art and all that stuff. Understanding his origin is as an alien. But that doesn't mean he has to be a Kryptonian, right? He can still be human, can't he? He has these things to consider. And of course, with that, naturally, in this, on the final panel, he comes to the conclusion that Earth makes him human, even though Krypton made him Superman. Overall, I would say that The Man of Steel from 1986, written by John Byrne, is a really strong introduction to the character. It comes after the Crisis of Infinite Earths and is a reintroduction of all the key elements to Superman. So sometimes the stories in each issue don't quite feel full, but it's merely meant to introduce you to the key elements going forward. Such as, of course, Superman's relationship with Lois Lane and her strength in her passion to become a great reporter and her, his relationship with Jonathan and Martha Kent, of course, the troubles that he has with Lex Luthor. We, of course, get to see Bizarro, although he's not named, and we get to see Batman. How cool is that? Now, I would say that some of the weaknesses besides some of the stories not feeling quite full is that the dialogue, especially the, the part with Batman and where we see Lex Luthor first, really get a taste of Superman and his anger at him. These are a little bit weak and don't do much, but there are lots of really cool things and the artwork is fantastic, really colorful, really bright, really gives you the sense of power and courage of Superman and I love it. So that's all I want to say. Thank you very much. Have a good day.